actually funding the leadership of Taliban, of Al Qaeda, of Akani, in all these double deals, opium dealing, uh, you name it, uh, you know, the uh, brother of Karzai, Karzai, all of this is going on. And, and so there are real, real terrorists, real groups that attack, but generally they're being given funding and support from the military industrial complex globally. It's bigger than the U.S. that needs to keep these conflicts going. But then they always allow Al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders to escape, a.k.a. the airlift of evil, in November of 2001, where 40-plus thousand Al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders were flown out on C-130s out of Kandahar into Pakistan and paid in gold bars. And it's the same story over and over again. And the opium trade went up during that time, too, like tenfold. Tenfold. From 7% to 93%. Yeah. And, and again, then they moved them into bases in Jordan, uh, Turkey, and Western Iraq. And then now they've let them take most of Iraq. And then they act like, oh, we don't know why they're doing this. And then they're claiming they're allied with Iran. Obama's not allied with Iran, uh, with the uh, prime minister of Iraq. That's pure BS. Us going to Iraq right now is like inviting an arsonist back to the scene of a crime. We started that fire. <laughs> we created everything that's going on there now. And now they're doing it again, bringing in Al-Qaeda, who makes Saddam Hussein, in my view, look like a, a choir boy. Yeah, exactly. It's mind-blowing that, I mean, that our country does this stuff all the time. Well, I mean, look at Al-Qaeda. They literally mutilate women. They kill kids. They murder any Muslim that isn't a radical, Christians. I mean, these people are nutcases. They're eating hearts on TV. Uh, they're just a bunch of criminal scum. I mean, these people are filth. I mean, you give them that kind of backing, that of kind of money. Of all the radical Muslims, who's the worst? Taliban, by far. Taliban well, that's, that's and Al-Qaeda. Al -Qaeda. Yeah, but those guys were, they're so organized because we've given them the training. We train them. Special forces train them. In the them. 70s, in the 80s, and yes. then again, to quote, fight the we other Taliban. Them. So the only time, like in Iraq, that was a bunch of guys popping shots off at you for the most part. Insurgents, farmers picking up guns and shooting. In Afghanistan, those were well-coordinated attacks. They had the weapons. They had funding. They could get passports. It was crazy to see the amount of force they had when they would come at you. Now, were you, you were blown up in Afghanistan and Iraq in armored yeah. vehicles, right? Indeed. Well, Iraq, yeah. Iraq was uh, pretty nuts though, that time. One of the times, yeah. <laughs> because didn't you get blown up by an ID and then the special forces dug you out and then you got hit again? Yeah. That was uh, in Samarra, Iraq. That was one of the holiest cities in Iraq, just above Tikrit. What happened then? I was coming over a bridge, and I remember we had been stopped that night prior. We were doing a convoy security uh, uh, route down MSR Tampa from uh, Mazul, yeah, from or from uh, Tikrit down to uh, Balad, and we got stopped because a convoy in front of us got blown up. So we're waiting all night, and you can't do anything. You're stuck on a road. Everyone's pulling security. You're doing your fives and 25s where you look five feet out and then look another 25 feet out to make, there's no, make sure there's no IEDs or bombs anywhere around your vehicle. And we're sitting there. The night goes through and the sun starts coming up. And they finally get that, that accident cleared up out of the way. People are taken to the hospital and we're free to go. So we're driving down the road. And I remember coming over this bridge. It's the uh, Samara Bypass right over the river. And I remember going, it was the last thing I had. Metallica fuel was on in my ear. And I'm sitting there driving over the bridge, and I remember going, that looks like a <laughs> And just this huge explosion. And everything slowed down, and I remember seeing a piece of paper, like, float right past my face. And then everything sped up, and we were just rocking back and forth, flipping down the road. The tires were gone. Uh, my commander was about almost a quarter mile, half a mile back in the convoy between fuel trucks. And he said the tires blew past him in midair. I mean, it was chaos and screaming and I had blood coming out of my head. I'm throwing up blood and all I remember is sitting there laying there as a vehicle starts catching on fire, banging on the, the panels and they're like ripping them off trying to get us out before we burn to death. It, it was... It, it, and then you said you got hit again right there. Yeah. What happened next? Well, after we got pulled out, uh, special forces from a compound called Brassfield Moore came and got us and put me in a Humvee and they start trying to drive me to the hospital real quick. And then whoosh, another explosion right down the road, maybe about a mile down the road and around a corner to the right. It was just horrible. I remember laying outside of that Humvee and I put my back against the tire and I just remember looking up the sky and going like, you know what, this is it. Like, I'm, I don't even, I'm not going to live past this day again. And now, how many months have you been waiting to get into the VA coughing up blood every night? Well, I mean, technically it's been about a year, but since I've been here with the new VA, it's been since April since I moved here. 
You know the illegals are getting instant health care. Yeah. And that's what pisses me off when we go out there and we talk to these people. And they're, you know, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. Come on. You know, when you have a boat that can only hold 10 people and you add 20, it's going to sink. We need to take care of what we have here before our country sinks. And it's sinking. I mean, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, that, that don't get help at all whatsoever. They're 10 times worse than I am that still don't get help. Joe, we're going to come back with your report in this next segment. Uh, in 30 seconds, tell folks about it. Uh, the video coming up is a time when I was in Afghanistan. We got called to search what we believe to be an IED-making facility. Uh, when we got there, it turned out to be a lot more. And you'll see what that is in the video. And this is breaking. No one knows about this. It's the people there. The people who were there that day. So this is breaking news here, even though it's years ago. We need to get an article out about this today. Yeah, I mean, I never told anybody about it until now. Yeah. And so, again, folks, people accuse us of saying there's no terrorist out there. No, a lot of the big events are staged for provocateur. There's a lot of real stuff people don't know about, and it's going to break right here at InfoWars, straight ahead with photos and videos. Stay with us. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Gain your independence all this month. Emergency Essentials will help you prepare with our biggest Mountain House sale ever. Now through July 31st, save up to 50% on every Mountain House can in stock. Mountain House food is the premier solution for your long-term storage. The freeze-dried lasagna is only $17.49, and the pasta primavera is only $18.49. Shop Emergency Essentials right now at BePrepared.com for the lowest prices in the country. The choice is clear. Be unprepared or BePrepared.com. By now, you may know that a Bitcoin is the first decentralized currency that's easily transferred from person to person over the Internet. No bank needed. This means lower fees and accounts can never be frozen, limited, or closed. Plus, a large number of businesses and merchants already accept Bitcoins. And Bitcoins are easily exchanged for dollars, euros, and more. If you're interested in making money in the Bitcoin market right away, and by right away we mean start making money today, please visit us at cloudhashing.com. Cloudhashing.com is one of the fastest growing Bitcoin miners in the world, delivering the highest profits to people just like you. To get started, join us at cloudhashing.com and you will start mining Bitcoins right away and get paid daily. You heard correctly. You will receive payments every single day. And the best part? You do not need a computer or need any experience in mining Bitcoins. It's perfect for everyone. Learn more at cloudhashing.com. Just like it sounds, cloudhashing.com. Start making money today at cloudhashing.com. Curious about what comes next? Next is the feeling of vulnerability you get after you arrive home to discover your house has been ransacked by burglars. Fool the bad guys with a new improved fake TV. You asked for it, we listened, and we made our new fake TV three times brighter than our previous model. The brightness of our new fake TV is equivalent to a 40-inch TV. It simulates the color and motion of a real TV while you're away from home. And when burglars think someone is home watching television, they're likely to pass your house and move on to an easier target. The new, brighter Fake TV is only $39.95 and includes free shipping. Go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. In the next hour, Wayne Madsen joins us, NSA whistleblower. We'll take your calls as well. Please remember, this entire operation is truly independent and supported by We the People. That's you becoming members of PrisonPlanet.tv, buying the high-quality water filters at InfoWarsStore.com, the great supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. Here is the first installment, the premiere of the first episode of hard-hitting news coverage of wars and conflicts on the front lines, in the trenches, with Staff Sergeant Retired Joe Biggs.
Let me tell you a story about a couple of years ago when I was in Afghanistan. Uh, the unit I was with, we got a call from our commanding unit back in Salerno, Afghanistan, and they had intel on what they thought was going to be a possible IED making facility. So we get this call and we're kind of thinking like, all right, you know, what are we going to come across? This is going to be crazy. None of us are, you know, EOD trained. We don't know how to deal with explosives that much. That's going to be a little, a little crazy going up into this place like that without that kind of training. So we got everything gathered, all the equipment we could possibly think we would need for something like this. And we kind of go up to the door and we don't know what to expect at all. We walk in and there's this family, just regular family. There's a, I think there was four adult males, a couple wives and a whole bunch of kids, you know, cows, goats, all this stuff inside this compound area. And we're walking around, and I'm sitting there thinking, this place could be booby-trapped. Every time I took a step, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my God, this would be the last step I ever take in my life. So we go through, and we have an initial search of the entire compound. We don't find anything at all. And usually when we get intel from the source that we got it from, it's usually always been pretty much spot on. Never, it's never been too far off. So I was sitting there thinking, you know what, I'm going to get my metal detector. So I run back out to the MRAP and I go grab the metal detector and come back in and I just start scanning the walls and we immediately start getting hits. So we bring out hammers and all that stuff and just start knocking through the walls. And what we found was mind blowing. The skin, I mean the hair on my skin just popped up, I had goosebumps. HME, which is homemade explosives, passports, money, grenades, weapons, throughout, I mean they had it buried under huge stacks of hay. Just after we spent time we went through with that detector. We found so much stuff and laid it out. It was an entire arsenal. I mean, they, they had phone books with people's names in New York circled, like Congress people, things like that, that they had intent, they had the money, they had the backing, they had the explosives to pull it off. And it was just nuts. And the scariest thing for me was seeing those glass marbles because what happens when something like that blows up and you go in and you get x-rayed, you can't pick up glass shards. So when that hits you, those fragments go into your body, those marbles, and you're just bleeding to death. You just sit there and the doctors are laying around you like, you know, there's nothing they can do. And just to see what they had in the plan, you know, it wasn't just an IED making facility. These guys were planning on doing something over here in America. So for all these people that think that a lot of the stuff's made up, I mean, it's real. The threat is out there. There's people out there who hate us, who want us killed. You know, I know we funded... Taliban back in the day. Let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded. But these were Taliban guys that had money to do it and they had the motivation to get all that stuff and spend that much time hiding that stuff in their compound, putting up these huge fake walls, holding all their stuff. I just, I, I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes just sitting there thinking like, oh my God, like if we wouldn't have stopped that from happening, that could have been another big incident here on our home turf. And I'm just glad that we got the intel we did to be able to go out there and stop that from happening. All right, first installment of that. We'll put it up on InfoWars.com for everybody by the end of the broadcast today with an article. And it's got a lot of exclusive photos and video that Joe Biggs and other members of his unit shot. We'll be back with the second hour. Tell your friends and family to tune in. This is Reality Radio. Thank you for this listening. This is Resistance to, to Tyranny. This is the InfoWars. Visit GCNlive.com today. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO or Organic Super Male Vitality Formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and get the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life.